YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with one breakout player for every single NFL team to watch this season a video we do every single year i'm excited about it excited about our in-season content right around the corner hope you join us for all that uh smash that like button but starting with one of my favorite ones in this video bill's second year tight end dalton Kincaid, definitely one to watch i think everyone realizes he's, he's solid he's going to be so, he's going to be solid but he is going to be much more of an impact much more of a factor than people realize people you know they lost the Diggs. digs people worrying a little bit not a problem. Of course, they added other receivers, but Dalton Kincaid is the guy to watch, even though he's a tight end. But he is going to, when it comes to the tight end and receiver positions, he's going to al align in all those spots. We're going to see him a lot on the outside and in the slot, and he could play in line as well. Going to be a major factor. Uh, for the Patriots, I uh, went with Keon White. You know, a lot of people might choose Christian Gonzalez, but I mean, he was looking like the defensive rookie of the year, possibly um, before he got injured. So. It's not really going to feel like a breakout season for that guy. He's going to be really good as long as he's on the field. Keon White is one to watch, a guy that is unique because of his physicality, his strength, you know, power combined with his athleticism, and he's a different type of pass rusher. You know, he can rush standing up off the edge, could put his could can put his hand in the dirt and rush uh, on the on the front from the front as well. And the Patriots are usually pretty good with guys like that, so it's a guy that's either going to be very important part of the rotation or he could start. Um, definitely another second year player to watch for a, for a breakout season. Jets, I would go with Javon Kinlaw, who's kind of been underwhelming. Maybe some people will call a bust so far. He was kind of a raw prospect just because of his freakish traits out of South Carolina. Um, and, and he goes to, yeah, a familiar system, a familiar coach and Robert Sala uh, w with the Jets and playing around that stacked defensive line I, I think he's he's due he's due for a breakout season I think he should play fairly well uh, a lot of people say yeah the talents could be there still um, for him to have that breakout season it's mainly made the character so got to keep him in line obviously but definitely one to watch for the Jets in addition uh, they had through free agency uh, the Dolphins I'll go with Jordan Brooks he's had an interesting early part of his career the former Seahawk, former Texas Tech Red Raider, was a first-round pick for a reason, was a really good run-stuffing middle linebacker. And there was times in Seattle where it's like, okay, this is like a top-ten linebacker in the making, like very soon. And there's times where it's like a little inconsistent, you know, does have durability concerns, could be replaced. It's kind of like it's been a mixture of everything there. But I like the situation with this new Dolphins defense. I think they'll, they'll get a lot out of their linebackers – going forward they didn't really do that recently um so brooks still has that upside as long as he's healthy i think he he could play the best year of his career so far so one to watch for miami there washington i'm gonna go with emmanuel forbes and he had a really rough rookie season uh and there he has some competition in there at corner so maybe he doesn't even start week one i'm counting on him getting that playing time though but Man, this guy has a lot of upside still. He was a big-time playmaker at Mississippi State. It's why he got drafted so so early. Insane playmaker. You know, the instincts off the charts. He's going to get his hands in the ball. And that's what he is. Like, when you think Emmanuel Forbes, you know, think about the Mississippi State corner. He is a man coverage playmaker. That is the best way to explain Emmanuel Forbes. And you think, and he plays for Dan Quinn. Think about Dan Quinn's defense, a lot of man coverage. Think about the corners that he coached in Dallas. Deron Bland, Trevon Diggs, those are man coverage playmaking corners. So Forbes, I, I think, will play, and I think we'll see him get his hands in the ball a bit. So in need, very, very much in need of a breakout season after a poor performance, but it was just his rookie year. So give him a shot, give him a shot here. Uh, I think he gets the job done this year. Giants, I'm going to go with Kayvon Thibodeau, and he's already been pretty solid, but, man, he's got so much more ability in him. He's got so much more upside. Now he's got Brian Burns on the opposite side of, as him, and Brian Burns creates for his teammates because he gets pressure. He beats the you know the tackle in front of him, uh, and sometimes people get sacks off of Brian Burns' production, and Thibodeau's a good enough player to do it on his own, but now you have him on the opposite side. I, I think he's really going to break out and, and feel more like that top pick that we were, you know, ex expecting his play to be like that top pick, I should say. So, uh, the Giants had, had a few. I thought about Wandale Robinson. I thought about Bellinger, the tight end, really stepping up as well. So they had a few. For the Eagles, I'm going to go Jordan Davis, and, and it feels like people are talking about him less and less for some reason. I think it's because of the other defensive linemen, and because of another Georgia defensive tackle and Jalen Carter, who 
really kind of broke out as a rookie, could break out even further, could make himself known as an elite defensive tackle this year. So sure, you could put Jalen Carter up here, but the bigger name, no one would be surprised about any level of play. It wouldn't really feel like a wild breakout. Davis, people are starting to forget about. This guy is a unique talent. Uh, I, I think he's going to be a special nose tackle. I think after the season, we're going to be talking about him as one of the better nose tackles in all of football. So Jordan Davis is one that I am watching for the Philadelphia Eagles. For the Cowboys, I'm going to go Rico Dowdle, I think who, who I think is their best running back. When he had opportunities last year behind Tony Pollard, and there wasn't a whole lot of opportunities other than Tony Pollard, but when he had opportunities... He looked good. He looked really explosive, and they brought back Zeke. And I think some people are thinking, well, Zeke's the guy, and he probably will be in goal line short yards. But I think Dottle's the guy. Uh, he looked really explosive last year. The Cowboys, it was a reason they didn't really focus on adding a big-time running back. It was a little bit of a surprise to some people, a lot of people. Uh, I think it's because this guy right here, uh, they got plans for him, and he's going to be much better than people think. So a breakout guy, he's going to be uh, – he's going to make – his name known as like a RB1 this year. Be really solid for the Cowboys. Bengals, I'm going to go with Daxon Hill. Thought about Miles Murphy, who I liked a lot out of Clemson. Uh, he's just behind two studs already, but we'll see him a little bit more. But uh, Dax Hill, you know, safety, corner, heard he's going to take more reps at corner. When I evaluated him out of Michigan, I liked him at corner. I'm like, this guy's a slot corner to me that has a lot of upside if you get him reps on the outside. Uh, I did not view him at all as the Jesse Bates replacement. That didn't really work out. They kind of tried him in the box, more of a strong safety last year. He's pretty good blitzing. Uh, I didn't know use him at corner a bit. Um, you know, Mike Hilton's one of the best slot uh, corners in football, but they're kind of getting ready for life without him after this year. So I, I think we'll see some reps from Hill really everywhere, all over the secondary. But I'm excited about him. I, I like his upside at corner. I just hope they finally use him right. But he did have some flashes, again, getting in the backfield. Could he be the future Mike Hilton? That's a possibility. DJ Turner is either going to be that or an outside corner, too. So some guys to watch for Cincinnati. Uh, Pittsburgh, love me some Keanu Benton. I actually had a first-round grade on, on him uh, last year's draft, the 2023 draft. Uh, and he was quietly good last year. Like, he was very solid. Why I say quietly is people didn't really talk about him a ton. He was really good stopping the run. Um, he has a lot of upside getting after the quarterback. He showed up that last year in Wisconsin. Um, you know, sometimes they played him at the nose position a little too much. You know, it kind of held him back a little bit, even though he was still really good. But uh, this guy next to Cam Hayward, he's about to be special. I think he's got a special, special future. So watch out for Keanu Benton, second-year player out of Wisconsin. Uh, Browns, I'm going to go Jerry Judy. I mean, he's been in the league for a little bit, but and he's been solid. He's had some has some production, but he's when people when you say Jerry Judy, most people go a decent player, underwhelming, like good underwhelming and I think he's ready to break out and be possibly that guy that he's supposed to be I think pairing him with Amari Cooper like Cortland Sutton was really good with Denver did it really mesh well I mean the whole offense didn't really mesh did it mesh well for a guy like Jerry Judy I don't really think so I think him and Amari Cooper uh and Joku Elijah Moore Deshaun Watson like kind of fits his style uh, and the Browns is you know, a guy that they've been, tar I felt like they were targeting for a while before they actually got him. So uh, I'd watch for him to have his best season of his career yet. So a big one there in Jerry Judy. Ravens, I am hearing a lot of hype on Rashad Bateman. This was a, 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 a top pick for a reason, or a first round pick for a reason. Was very solid at Minnesota, uh, you know, but he's had an underwhelming start to his career. And some people may say bust. But you watch him play, and he separates. He He's a good route runner. Like the same thing we saw at Minnesota, why people had him labeled as um, you know a, a pretty good prospect. He does that, though, uh, on Sundays. He, he Or whenever the Ravens play, he gets separation. Um, he's just got to do a little more consistent job catching the ball. But there's a lot of hype on him uh, at camp. Uh, Harbaugh hyping him up as well, and now is his time to kind of fully put it together. So Bateman, and they didn't add a big time receiver for a reason, perhaps want to add it because they have one that they believe could be that guy next to Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman. Uh, so definitely want to watch for Baltimore uh, for the Chicago Bears. I'm gonna go with Javon Dexter. They had a couple too. I thought about uh, second year tackle Darnell Wright, uh, but he had a good rookie year. Uh, Dexter. A little bit of pressure because the Bears defense is really solid, but the kind of the one question mark is interior defensive line, and they're gonna need they're gonna need multiple guys to step up. I think it starts with Javon Dexter, who was really solid at Florida. Because of his body type and the way Florida used him, he's a little bit of a tweener. Like, is he you know, where where does he align? Could he end up as a nose tackle? Does he have to end up as a nose tackle? But it seems like he got uh, you know a lot more in shape. 
And uh, I, I think he'll be really solid in this Eberflus defense. So it's a second-year breakout to watch for Chicago. Um, he's got good players around him. Uh, for the Vikings, you may have thought I was going to go Jordan Addison, but you know, really good as a rookie already. We know what to expect from him. A guy that really could break out, and he was solid as a rookie, but linebacker Ivan Pace Jr., perfect for Brian, Brian Flores' defense. Uh, he, he's going to blitz. I think Ivan Pace is going to blitz more than anybody in football. I actually, I'm, I'm going to predict that, and he's going to rack up some pressures and some sacks because of that. So he's going to be that that uh, kind of that Swiss Army knife that he was at Cincinnati, maybe in Minnesota under Brian Flores here in year two uh, after having a pretty decent rookie season. So a weapon at the linebacker position to watch. Packers, Packers have a lot of options. I'm going to go Tucker Craft, second-year tight end. Remember, they drafted two tight ends last year. They took Musgrave as well, who's more of the – Notable. People talk about him more. He is a little flashier, more like a receiver, um, athletic, has more upside, you could say. Uh, and they were playing him over Kraft for most of the year. Then they turned towards Kraft, and he looked good. He looked really good, really consistent. Um, and he actually might be the more complete, like the safer option for them. So I'd watch out for him continuing where he left off for Green Bay. I wanted to go Jaden Reed, their receiver, because I'm a huge fan, and he is really good behind the line of scrimmage. But what people don't realize is he got better every single game. He got better uh, getting open downfield. He is a he possibly is a star in the making. Uh, wanted to go him, but you know he kind of broke out as a rookie. Was further than expected, further along than expected last year. So was that like an eligible candidate here? But you could go him. Uh, Lucas Van Ness is a guy that people want to talk about. For the, the Packers had a lot. Uh, Carl Brooks, Wyatt, you know, a couple defensive linemen there. I look at Tucker Crab. I think people are kind of counting on Musgrave, and I, I think he could be good. But Crab's the guy to watch to me. I liked him a lot out of South Dakota State a couple years ago. Lions, I'm going to go Josh Pascal, who I loved uh, a lot out of Kentucky, was polished as a run stopper for a defensive end. And you kind of can see because of his play style, he can play D-end or he can slide inside, play three technique. The Lions have kind of moved him around a little bit. He has to stay healthy, but he's really good run stopper, and he's had his flashes getting after the quarterback where his upside is. Uh, Kaminsky went down already. They're going to they're gonna ask a lot out of Pascal. I think he... I. I could feel the upside watching him at Kentucky, watching the moments in, in Detroit, and they're really good developing players. If they're on the field, they will develop them. So that's a breakout player to watch here uh, for Detroit. For the Titans, going to go Kenneth Murray. Kenneth Murray, who was with the Chargers, you know, former Oklahoma linebacker. Oklahoma used him in different ways. They blitzed him a lot. They rushed him off the edge. That's where he based, you know, made his money. I don't think Staley and the Chargers used them right. Too many reps down, like deep in coverage. I, I didn't think they used them right completely. And a lot of it, people know, you know, think of Murray and say he's probably a bust right now. They think he's a bust right now, but and a lot of it is on him as well. But I just did not like him in that defense. I think he's really going to fit this Tennessee defense. I actually like that free agency signing, unlike a lot of people. But I'm hearing really good things about him in Titans camp right now. Definitely a breakout player. Uh, to watch. Maybe he lives up to those expectations. Colts, I think you got to go Anthony Richardson. Um, it's a tough one, though, because you only saw a few games from him last year, so it's going to almost feel like he's a rookie. Can you call that type of player a breakout? But, man, he has a chance to be very special. I thought he was a little ahead of schedule in the few games we watched. Uh, it's tough to judge off that because it was a tough game plan for opposing defenses, and it's just a small sample size. He's got He has to stay healthy, but this is a player that has been hyped up Big time this offseason. So a lot of expectations. I do still think he's a, a prospect in a way. So I do think we could have ups and downs. But uh, he showed those glimpses last year. Like the highs are super high. So uh, I, I just hope he stays healthy because he could be a special player to watch. Uh, not just this year, but for a long time. The Jags had a lot of options here. The Jags had a lot. You have to go Trayvon Walker, former first-round pick. He was a raw prospect out of Georgia. He didn't fully put it together yet as an edge rusher. Georgia had him dropping in coverage a lot. They had him sliding inside a lot. He was winning reps. He wasn't getting those sacks. You know, just kind of getting him in the right spot and ha helping him finish plays because he's a freak athlete with a lot of physicality. And uh, he's Ryan Nielsen one is a good is a good defensive coach. They brought him in first year in. It's going to help Walker. Already hearing good things about him, kind of playing the right role, um, you know, so, and he was a raw prospect, so he wasn't supposed to be super, super good right away anyways, and he's been solid, but I, I think he's going to really break out and become that super good player that we are expecting here very soon. Uh, Texans, I'm going to go Christian Harris. I thought about putting Will Anderson here, but I mean, one defensive rookie of the year, I, I, I do think he'll break out even further, but it's, 
is he a candidate for breakout player of the year? He's kind of already broke out. Christian Harris, I thought, really got going at the end of last year, looking at that Browns playoff game, making making big-time plays. So I think he continues to feed off that and then breaks out as like a legit linebacker this year. So a good one for the Texans. Uh, for the Panthers, you, you absolutely have to go Bryce Young. He had an extremely disappointing rookie season last year. Uh, even though he didn't have help with the offensive line or the receivers, a lot was on him as well. Either way, Bad rookie season, very disappointing. I think he plays much better. I mean, he has to, but I do think he plays much better this year because, yeah, they add on the offense line, they added receivers, but the big thing to me is Dave Canales. That is a hell of an offensive mind that really fits today's era where the NFL is heading. Help Baker Mayfield. I thought he was a phenomenal play caller. Um, really was responsible, partly, you know, big part of it, of the Bucks being uh, as good as they were, better than expected. So uh, expect Bryce Young to take a step up, break out a little bit this year. Can't wait to watch. The Falcons probably were the ultimate breakout team. Hard to pick just one. I want to put Drake London on here because I, I'm i very high on Drake London this year. It's a must-have guy for me in fantasy with Kirk Cousins. And I thought, I thought Drake London broke out last year. I think after this upcoming year, I think we could be talking about him as a top 10 receiver. I think, that, I think he's going to play that well. But did kind of break out last year. Um, you know, I'm, you can go Darnell Mooney, you go Kyle Pitts is a big one, but Kirk Cousins, the way he fed TJ Hawkinson, I got to go Bijan though. Bijan was good last year, but it, he honestly was a little underwhelming. And some of it was, he wasn't getting the ball enough, but he would open up games like not hitting the hole right. And they were like, we'll go Algiers. We're going to feed him a little bit more, but Robinson has so much talent. They're going to unleash him. He's going to run wild. But I think a big thing here is Kirk Cousins going to get him the ball through the air. He's going to give him the ball, whether it's behind the line of scrimmage or downfield. Cousins is a smart quarterback that knows the right, the best option to throw to, and he's an accurate passer. So Bijan is going to run wild. He's going to catch the ball very well, uh, like he did at Texas. So I have to go Bijan, but they had some legit options for this video, the Falcons. Uh, Saints, I go A.T. Perry. He had some moments last year. I remember against Minnesota when they tried to come back. He did have Jameis Winston at quarterback during that comeback. But, man, he made some unreal plays. But some of the plays he made in college, like a big-time contested catcher, phenomenal hands. And they didn't really look to add any more big-time receivers. Uh, you know, they have Olave as a big-time receiver. They had Sh- they have Shahid, obviously, who was a speedster. Um, you know, they didn't really look to add in Perry's role because – they know what they have in A.T. Perry, so it's a really good sign here uh, for the Saints, uh, you know, possible up-and-coming receiver. Uh, for the Bucks. I'll go Yaya Diaby. I, you know, I almost had to uh, remove him possibly because there was a little bit of a scare, a little bit of injury scare, but it sounds like he should be good to go week one. If he's not, I would imagine for sure week two. But he's another one that sneakily had a really good rookie season. Like, people do not talk about it. He was super productive. Uh, I liked him a lot out of Louisville, and they almost had him out of position at times. They rushed three, so he was head up on the tackles, even inside the tackle when he rushed from the outside. He was he was phenomenal from every spot. But with his athleticism and his you know his overall traits, he's an he's an edge rusher, and he fits the Buccaneers defense so well. So for him to kind of get going already last year, it's an incredible sign. Uh, so much upside. So I'm really looking forward. I think he'll be their best pass rusher if he's healthy. Chargers, I'm going to go with the offensive lineman. I'm going to go with guard Zion Johnson a couple years ago out of Boston College. I thought he looked his better year so far was his rookie year. Uh, but under Harbaugh uh, and Roman and how they, they approach the offensive line and, and their scheme, uh, they're going to have this offense. It's more of a complete offensive line now. They're going to have that offensive line ball, balling. And he was a big-time prospect for a reason. So I think he's going to play very, very well this year. So one to watch uh, when it comes to uh, them opening up runs and protecting Justin Herbert. For the Broncos, I'm going to go Baron Browning. Huge fan of Baron Browning. Uh, you know, somewhat recently switched to the edge position. He was an off-ball linebacker at Ohio State, even though he did have some reps off the edge. And then when when the Broncos switched him to a full-time edge like two years ago, he looked good. Like he looked like a natural ton of ups. Like he looked like a natural for barely playing the position. So he he was kind of on everyone's radar, especially mine, that he could be legit. Then he's kind of dealt he dealt with some injuries, but. To me, if he's healthy and he's out there, he's the Broncos' best pass rusher. And he, his upside, people probably think it's here. I think it's up here. I think he could be that special. So one to watch for Denver. Uh, for the Raiders, I'm going to go Zamir White. He kind of broke out at the end of last year, but it was such a small sample size. But he's going to continue to feed off that. He's going to be really solid. They let Josh Jacobs go for a reason. They, they really believe in Zamir White. Um, 
I don't play Madden, but I thought if this is true, I, I saw on Twitter that Alexander Madison has a better overall than Zamir White. I thought that was pretty funny. White's their guy. He's going to be very solid this year. He impressed me um, in, in, the, in the small sample size, but it's pretty easy, even with a small sample size, to tell if running backs have it or not. He is uh, he looked to be better than I expected for him, him to be, but even though he was a solid back at Georgia. Chiefs, I'm going to go with Shamari Connor. Uh, a couple years ago out of Virginia Tech, when they drafted him, I'm like, that is a Chiefs player, a defensive back that's physical, that can line up in different spots, that can man up on tight ends or anybody from the box. Uh, you know, in the Chiefs loss, obviously some key guys in the secondary, but this is a guy that's going to play. He played a bit for them already, but he's going to play more, and he's going to play a variety of spots. Again, he can play safety, he can play in the box, the slot area, can't put it past and play outside corner. I bet you we see him in all those spots at times. You know, he's going to play some more than the others, but he's going to play all those spots. It's just... A, a total Chiefs defender right here. So watch out for Connor uh, to break out. Cardinals are going to go with a second-year offense line Paris Johnson Jr. They had to have him in that draft. They absolutely had to have him. They targeted him. They didn't want They didn't want any other guys, and they realized that, you know, something they were drafting Will Anderson, but they, they they knew who they wanted, so they felt they can trade back and still end up getting them. They do that. It's just a guy they had to have because they had a plan there. So I think he takes a big step up because – He's a sure thing. Like, there's no way this guy's not going to be, you know, maybe he's not great. I th- definitely think he has potential to be great. But I-, I think there's it's almost a sure thing that this is a good offensive lineman for the Arizona Cardinals. So I'd watch him for take, for him to take a major step up this year. Seahawks, this is one of the ultimate ones on this video. Jackson Smith and Jigba. He was almost a little underwhelming to people early last year, but it was because the Seahawks used a lot of, you know, they had two tight ends out there, and they basically just had, you know, two receivers, DK and uh, Lockett. So there wasn't a whole lot of chances for him to get, uh, you know, a ton of reps. Uh, but they kind of tweaked things as the year went on, and he started to get more and more reps. And he, JSN looked really, really good. R- incredible hands, was getting open, uh, can play him inside or out. So he was looking special, you know, and now. Uh, you know, they, they, they switch up their offense even more, and it might have some spread looks at times, which the more receivers, the better. They have those receivers. They're all going to play. They're going to air the ball out, no, no matter if it's Geno or Sam Howell. Uh, you know, I think Geno's the guy, but he's dealing with a couple injuries. Sounds like he'll be okay. But JSN's going to be really, really good. Uh, we saw a glimpse of it at the end of last year, and I think he fits this up this new system even more. Ram's going to go to the lineman. I'm going to go Steve Avila, second year offensive lineman from TCU. He's going to play center for them. When he was at TCU, he played all positions, and, and there was people saying that he could play all positions equally as effective. And I saw some reps with him at center, and I was thinking like, could this be this guy's spot? And I've heard takes you know around that time from like scouts like they they view him as more of a center, and I'm like, and I didn't think anyone was going to draft him and put him there. And now that's going to be the case going forward, though. He is going going forward because they've at, they they're set everywhere else, and he can fill in the perfect part is he can fill in in def, different spots if somebody goes down. So I think he has a lot of upside as as a center. So definitely a guy to watch. And then one more, the 49ers, uh, Jair Brown, second year safety, and he had to play a bit because of injuries last year. And he looked fairly solid. Not a whole lot of chatter about him, but. Yeah, that's another guy. Like he can be a playmaker, a rangy playmaker in the back end, but he can kind of come up as well. Um, and that, I think that fits pretty well uh, with Hufunga, who's coming back this year. So we didn't get to see Brown play with him. I'm excited about it. Um, and again, we saw some moments from him last year. So definitely one to watch as a breakout player. A lot of second year players in this list. Um, you know, the, the, some of the second year players are really ready to get going and got to get more of a role and, and become a better players overall. So really excited to watch all these guys. Let me know your guys' thoughts. If you thought I. You know, if there's a snub, you thought I should have used a different player, let me know in the comments. We'll do the same video um, in the very near future before the season about secret weapons. Every team's secret weapon. I do that every year. It's one of my favorite videos So before the season starts. So really excited. In-season content right around the corner. Weekly picks, uh, bets, locks, power rankings, and a lot more. Hopefully you join us. Make sure to like. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.